Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is comparing profile tolerancing methods. And the question that was submitted is I have three questions regarding how to tolerance the profile of a part shown in the attached drawing. The first question is what are the key differences among the three profile tolerance approaches? Number two, do they control the part to the same level of accuracy? And number three, which method would you recommend as the preferred practice and why? So let's take a look at the drawing that was submitted. Here we have a sample of the three different tolerancing methods that the individual submitted. And the first one we can see is just simple size dimensions. So we have a 15 plus or minus 0.2, a 50 plus or minus 0.2, and a 30 plus or minus 0.2. And we can see on the second example that we have a flatness callout of 0.4 for this bottom surface, a perpendicularity of 0.4 for this side surface, and a perpendicularity to A and B for the side surface over here, which qualifies datum feature C. And then we have an unless otherwise specified note saying all of the other surfaces beyond just these three are being controlled with a profile tolerance to A, B, and C of 0.4. And then lastly, we can see here we have a profile all over symbol. So it's two circles at the elbow indicating to us that it's not all around but rather all over so it's every surface in all directions away from where it should be so let's take a look at these three examples one by one and talk about the key differences and try and answer the first question so this first one up here is size dimensions only so what's interesting about this is there's not actually anything controlling the orientation so on this first example we could have a trapezoid and the distance from here to here could be exactly 15 and the distance from here to here could be exactly 50 and if you just reported those two sizes you might say that this part is perfect but what you lacked was the controlling the orientation here and so again be careful with something like this that's the first thing i would notice is the major flaw of as why i wouldn't use this method here um, now if you have something else controlling the orientation it might be okay there's better ways to do this with gd and t as far as this goes, we could have a max length here of 50.2, and we could have a min distance of 49.8. And again, remember rule number one, we have to be inside an envelope. So we are controlling the form of this thing. If we consider this 15 plus or minus 0.2, we would say that we have to be inside an envelope of worst case scenario, 15.2. So this envelope here is 15.2. And if the total height of this thing came in at 14.8, we could see that we could have a little bit of bow down the length of this feature. Again, if we measured locally at 14.8, we could have 0.4 of bow or form air down the length of these two surfaces. So again, that applies for all the size dimensions and the worst case size is the MMC or the largest size for external features. And we could have a small local size like we see here at the LMC, which is the smallest size allowed. So we're just controlling the size of each of these features uh, completely independently of the other dimensions. So again, not the greatest methodology, but you can still do it if you want to. Now, the next one down here, we see we're controlling datum feature A to be flat. Datum feature A identified here, we have a flatness of 0.4. That means we have a tolerance zone that this surface has to be inside of. So this surface has to be inside here, and that zone is 0.4 in width. So we're controlling how flat that surface is. And the same thing over here for datum feature B. We're making sure that this surface stays inside a zone of 0.4. But the added complexity is that zone has to remain perpendicular to datum A. Now, datum A is not this surface. Datum A is a perfectly flat plane derived from that surface. This is datum A, and this blue zone here has to be perpendicular to datum A. And again, datum A is derived from the three high points of that lower surface. And so we're making sure that this zone is also perpendicular to that bottom surface. So now we are controlling the orientation that we weren't getting up here. So we're controlling that, and we're doing the same thing with datum feature C over here. We're just making sure that it's perpendicular to A, this surface down here, and perpendicular to B, which is the back surface back here. And so we can see we're controlling the orientation as well as the form, because this surface has to be inside that zone. So we're controlling the form and the orientation to two other features. So if we combine all of this together, and then we assume all of the other surfaces, like this one here, is being controlled with respect to that origin defined by A, B, and C, 
the planes created from the three high points of all of our surfaces, we could see that we can now locate this surface from maybe datum feature C, orientate it to datum feature A and B as well. And so if that's the case, what do we have as far as a worst case size on perhaps this 50 millimeters? From datum feature C, we'll derive datum C. So datum C might be this surface here. And this surface is going to establish the origin as to where the zone for this feature can be. This zone will be 50 millimeters away from datum C. And we can see that the width of that is also going to be 0.4. So from datum C, we can be 50 plus or minus 0.2 because our zone is total 0.4. So we could be 50 plus 0.2 or we give 50 minus 0.2 and still be inside this profile of a surface tolerance zone. And so it's very equivalent to this, except we're adding that orientation control. We are making sure these surfaces are relative to each other by referencing a common datum reference frame, which is A, B, and C. And the same scenario would be if we controlled this top surface up here, back to A, B, and C. We would see that we would establish A, which would be this datum that could control the vertical location of that surface. And from A, we can see that we'd be 15 with a zone of width 0.4. So it could go up 0.2 or down 0.2. So 15 plus 0.2 minus 0.2. Very equivalent. Um, again, you could utilize either this option or this option and get very similar results, except that you're making a lot of bold assumptions here as far as the orientation control and the relative location of each of these features to each other are. Now, one thing to note here though, and it's a very important key difference between this value and this value. We saw that this surface could be bowed in like this, and the smallest measurement this could be would be 14.8. However, if we consider the flatness error here, we could see that this point could be 0.4 away from this point down here. That's the most amount of flatness. So we know that there's 0.4 right here, and we also know that datum A is right here. And we're locating this surface from this plane. And it's going to be 15, establishing our true profile. And we would set a zone at that 15 of 0.4 in width. So if that zone's 0.4 in width, we could see that we could go down 0.2. So if this is our zero and this is 15 here, we can go down 0.2, which would be 14.8. But we notice this point right here could go up 0.4. So in reality, if we were to measure from this point right here, which is the lowest that surface could be, to this point right here, it'd actually be 14.8 minus this 0.4. So it'd be 14.4. So that's much thinner than the option we had up here. And again, that's due to the form error that we applied and controlled on primary datum feature A. But again, it's added benefit because we're extra clear as to what tolerances we're applying and where. Nothing is left open to interpretation. Nothing is ambiguous. So again, this one here, although there's a little bit of a tolerance analysis we have to do, it's much more direct, much more calculatable. Uh, and so I would still prefer option number two here. Just make sure to adjust your tolerances appropriately. Now, the last example is profile of a surface all over. And as we mentioned, that profile of a surface all over is all surfaces at the same time and all three degrees of translation. It's a very complex tolerance zone that's checking every surface to all the other surfaces, kind of like a pattern of surfaces. And what we see here is we have a true profile of 50 or 15 and 30 on our three widths. And so if that's the case, we center our 0.4 tolerance zone at that location. That means that if our true profile is 50 in width here. We have the room to go 0.2 this way and 0.2 that way and 0.2 this way and 0.2 that way. If this surface went out 0.2 this way and this one went out 0.2 that way, we would grow by 0.4. So this is really like saying 50 plus or minus 0.4. And that's very different than the other options. And it's something to definitely consider. Even if we adjusted this to 0.2 instead of 0.4 to get a plus or minus 0.2, very similar to this one, I still don't love this as a solution. 
Not only because it's really hard to inspect, uh, unless you have some sort of CMM or scanning abilities, because uh, you're checking all of the surfaces simultaneously to every other surface. It's an iterative process. You can see if we had a box that looked like this, we could have a little bit of orientation error on that one, a little bit of orientation error on this one, this one could open up. And as long as all four of them, wherever they end up, could be iteratively adjusted to fit inside this zone, we would be good. This is controlling the orientation of all the surfaces to the other surfaces, very much like this one was. Um, but it's just not as direct and it's not as obvious as to which surfaces we want to locate and orientate the other ones to. It's a much difficult, much more difficult thing to inspect, um, but nonetheless, it is conclusive in controlling all of the surface in a very similar fashion. So again, that kind of answers the key differences um, in the approaches of these three methods. We obviously answered question number two throughout this process. They control the part to very differing levels of accuracy, right? The orientation between these, definitely not the same as these two down here. And the amount of control that we got from this one was twice as much uh, as the control we got from these other ones. And the, the types of control were very different as well. Uh, which features do you want to control everything else with respect to? And then lastly, the question number three, which method would you recommend as the preferred practice and why? Again, hopefully we've come to that conclusion here that option number two is definitely the best option out of the three that we show here. Again, none of them being outright illegal or wrong. This one, in my opinion, just provides more clarity, more direct calculable tolerances, and a much more direct way of inspecting all of the surfaces. So hopefully that helps answer your question, and thanks for submitting. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles